Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Grevin coming to you from Chicago as usual. And today we've got another chippy hearing uh, in front of Judge Manning. I did a lot of heavy editing. I don't have it all, but it, it's good. And what I have is is pretty darn interesting. Let's let's get this thing going. in here that it's been and if you folks chatted to see where y'all are at what we're ready that, for a hearing we, we 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 don't have any other movement but to move forward on this tpo your honor um hmm. the case has been reset since may 6th because as you can recall there was some evidence that was taken on the 6th of may of 2022 but then we continue it to see whether the parties could come to some type of an agreement we right. got back on the calendar then there was some issues um, right after May 6th on the 10th of May. Then after the contempt action, you know, then there was a removal. And then we were back on the calendar again on the, the 1st. And then at that point, I had filed an application for uh, interlocutory appeal. Then I was waiting for the court to sign it. Then we were back on the court again on the 8th of July. And then at that point, um, the court has signed the certificate of immediate review. So yeah. now we're here today. Um, you know, right. I had provided all my notices to everybody to be ready because at this point we, you know, there's we're not going to be able to come to a resolution. All right. So um, I don't see your client. Um, she was on earlier and not connected to audio, so I don't know. Let me see. Okay, Your Honor. Um, She's having some technical difficulties. She's going to try again to get back on. She says, she, like you said, Your Honor, she was on, and then something happened where she was. Okay, I caught a lot of, a lot of stuff. We had to, our usual 10 minutes of turn your camera on and mute yourself. Uh, the attorney here could not uh, spit out. She finally did right there, gave the procedural history of the case. The, the judge was concerned that there was an appeal pending, and therefore she can't uh, hold this hearing. We get, we get past all of that stuff. Um, the the uh petitioner i guess you would call her or plaintiff for the for the tpo has two attorneys and that's the that's sort of the big issue and uh they're both they're both a little cranky but but the the one that's related to her is is definitely the worst of the two right. all right um uh, you folks had a status conference Today, we had a status conference uh, earlier this morning, Judge, at 11 o'clock. They are not uh, her attorney in the divorce matter. We just showed up and got a final hearing date. Okay. Do you happen to know that final hearing date by any chance? Yeah, I think it's December 16th. Okay. We haven't gotten the order yet, but we discussed December 16th. Okay. Yeah, Judge uh, Ellery's like, oh, oh, she's pretty quick at moving cases. All right. Uh, let's see. Where's Miss Sullivan? You turn your camera on, ma'am. Do I take yourself off mute to make sure it works? That you're in your car, so don't drive during this hearing, okay, Miss Sullivan? Can you yeah, see if you can yeah. take yourself? Okay, there you go. It works. Okay. All right. All right, everybody. So we got a court reporter here. Y'all know this bill. I don't know who ordered the court reporter, but uh, let's see. Miss Hood, you're the one arguing today, right? Yes. Um, okay. We're the one that ordered the court reporter, Your Honor. I'm still looking for my officer because he's supposed to be on as well. And there's no one in the So are both parties going to share a takedown, Ms. Hood? Um, yeah. You know, it's, Ms. Bistro, are you going to share the takedown? Because if not, we're, we're okay with taking care of it. Yeah, I don't think Mr. Sullivan's prepared to share in that today. So we're not sharing a takedown. This is good. Okay. And I know you ordered it, but you know how I like to put, you know, gets paid within five days of receiving invoice. If not, you email me, we come back in and we get paid. So, uh, Ms. Bristow, you've informed your client, right, that he cannot avail himself or copy the transcript. I'm happy to have a phone call with him right now to ensure he understands all of that if the court would like or if he wants to come on. I mean, he's there. If you want to, if you want to call him, you can't. I mean, I, I, I don't. Doesn't matter 
to me, but I want him to understand that he can't avail himself for a copy of the transcript if he doesn't share and take down. Robert, um, if you share and take down, essentially you would be paying half the cost of the court reporter's fees today, and you would want that transcript if you felt the need to appeal the decision today for any, any reason. Um, that's up to you. I understand you're ready to be done with this litigation. So if you would like to take, you know, pay the cost of half the takedown, you're welcome to. If not, you are also welcome to say no and you will not receive any copy of the transcript of today's hearing and you'll just be okay with the outcome of whatever today is. Um, if we are able to know what her hourly rate is, I think that would be helpful. Okay. Madam Court Reporter. Um, I don't know. I would have to call my office. It it changes, and I will keep up with that. Your Honor, it, she is. Yeah, I, I don't. She's not able to say that she's an independent contractor with a service that we contract with, so she wouldn't know that. Are we to provide uh, that to the court? She, she can't no. tell her hourly rate. I mean, it's not that she can't. There's an hourly rate for a court reporter. But it, right, but that may be different because she is contracting through a company. Uh, no, that I, I, I understand that, Miss Miss King. But he has a right to know what half of it is. So, Madam Court Reporter, if you only can answer this question, do you have an idea? We know it's not five hundred dollars an hour. So, do you have an idea about what your hourly rate would be? So, for a half a day on Zoom, I believe it's almost two hundred. Okay, we're war we're warming up to uh, some some of the crazy here. Just watch, uh, Attorney. Uh, Athenia King and the facial expressions. I mean, I would be, I would be facing sanctions at a minimum if I did anything like this. But then the takedown of it. However, I don't know how long this hearing is scheduled for. Um, that could be uh, like another two hundred. It depends. So you get a flat rate. Okay, hold on, Miss King. Uh, let, please let me just talk to the court reporter, please. So, okay. court reporter. So you charge a flat rate and then the appearance fee, right? And then hourly right. for take. Okay. So what is your hourly for takedown? Um, now, please, Miss King. Please let me talk to the court reporter. She can at least give us an idea. If we can get past this, <laughs> go ahead, Madam Court Reporter. I believe it's around 200 because there's a separate rate for uh, a Zoom hearing and then the separate rate for takedown. So there's two different costs. Right. So what's the what's the takedown? Give us an idea so he'll know what expense he's looking at. Miss King, he's got to know. He has some right I, what, to know. But I'm not saying he King. does not. If you let okay. me finish, I am no, not saying no, that he does King, not have King, the right no, to know. No, ma'am. I'm talking to this court reporter. She's the one who works this first thing. Madam Court Reporter, give me a range of what, what you're, you're asking, asking her is. is Madam Court Reporter, what are you up our time. Miss, no, Miss, Miss King, not again. Unbelievable. Uh, her attitude, her demeanor, the, the way she's talking, and she just said to the judge, you're taking up our time. She's one of three attorneys, apparently, for for her client in, in this case. I have been doing this over 25 years. I have never, ever told a court that they are taking up my time. I can't imagine doing so. Madam Court Report. Yes. Not your appearance fee. What is your range for takedown on Zoom per hour? She just told you that. I believe it's around 200. I'm, I can text my office right now and get an no. exact figure. L Lily Bristow has some good facial expressions too. Uh, <laughs> they're spot on if you ask me. So it's not a two hundred dollar appearance; it's two hundred dollars an hour. Also, no. Miss King, so let's talk with Miss King. There's one horse, one rider. I am not. We're not doing this today. If this is how this is going to start, if she can let me do my job, Madam Court Reporter, do you yes. charge an appearance fee? Yes. Okay. Then you charge a separate hourly rate. No. So it's just an appearance fee of two hundred dollars for half a day or a few hours, right? I, I think it's one ninety six for a half a day on Zoom. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Roughly, gotcha. So it's not gonna go. It's two thirty. It ain't gonna go more than a few, a couple hours. Period. I, I didn't get it all, but I, I think it did, does go longer than a couple hours. Period. 
All right, there you go, Ms. Bristow. Hopefully that has given you your answer and your client can make a decision. Yes, it has. Robert, would you like to share in the takedown today? It would be roughly around $100. Uh, and you're on mute, so you can say yes or no. You don't have to explain anything. Just say yes or no. Put yourself off mute. Yes, I do uh, uh, consent to uh, my portion of the fee. Great. Yeah. We're good to go. She's going to send, so uh, Ms. Bristow, if you can make sure that Madam Court Reporter has your email so that they can send you a copy of the invoice. And uh, so that's awkward to have to have that conversation with your client in front of everybody on Zoom. It's not that personal or anything, but it's just awkward. The guy handles it. He's accused of some bad stuff uh, during this hearing, and that may or may not be the case. I don't know. But he can at least behave in court. I will give him that. Mr. Sullivan, you got to pay them within five days of receiving the invoice. All right. There's going to be one horse, one rider. Do we have a cop here? Because there's no one else in the waiting room. That's a... um, I just got off the phone with him. He should be ca calling in now, Your Honor. Let me just double check and see what the issue is. Just give me one second. Okay, Judge, I, I got a hold of him. He was having issues with trying to click on the Zoom information, so I had to re-forward it to him again um, so he can check in with us. And Mr. Elise is your witness, Ms. Hood, or your witness, Ms. Bristow? She just What's said the name of it again? I'm sorry. Ms. King. Ms. King. No more. No more out of you, Ms. King. Uh, no more. We're going, to have, I'm going to represent okay. my client. I have a right to do okay. that. No, no, no. Is it you or Miss Hood? Which it's is all it? of us? She has okay. But Miss King, stop interrupting me. You asked stop. a question. I Let me. I, I said Miss Bristow. Miss King. Bristow. It's Miss Hood's uh, witness. Thank yeah. you. That's it. I call out a name. That's what it is. It's that's what it is. Please. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a five minute break. Everybody is going to take a second and remember they will show nice courtroom decorum and professionalism towards me, whether they like me personally or not. You will not interrupt me. You will not answer a question unless I am addressing you. Ms. Hood, would you like to take the police officer first so that... Um, so that, that was interesting. Uh, that at that point, Miss King has is more than qualified for for contempt in my mind, and, and I'm sure in the judge's mind as well. And I, you know, I don't mean to speak for her, but I've been doing this a long, long time. And judges are not looking for excuses to hold people in contempt. It's the last thing they want to do. They want to complete the business before the court. They will endure a lot before they get there. And she decided to take a break because uh, because it was getting so annoying in there, and they just weren't, weren't paying attention um, to to what she was saying and, and instead of doing it. That doesn't mean that she didn't notice uh, the inappropriate behavior. It, it means that she chose not to pursue it there because she'd prefer the hearing to proceed than to, to get sidetracked on a contempt proceeding. I well, certainly you're... would, Judge. Thank you. <laughs> To get back on the street, you okay with that, Miss Bristow? Okay, let me look. Oscar says, hit like and subscribe. What else? And hit the bell notification. Thanks, Oscar. I still that. Okay, I put that in to break it up so I could tell you. I skipped her testimony. Um, yeah, I just don't. In, in my judgment, it wasn't it wasn't appropriate to to do do here. She makes allegations of uh, domestic violence. Uh, they call a police officer and her, and she makes allegations. It's long. They, they drop off the call. There are a bunch of gaps. Uh, but the, I I personally found the more interesting thing is when she gets cross examined. I also cut a lot of that out. So here's just a bit of that cross examination, but it shows where the hearing goes. During this litigation, as well as the divorce action, you got a U-Haul to remove all of your personal belongings as well as some other marital property items from the residence. Yeah, I'm going to object to relevancy on this. Um, I think it goes to her character and her credibility. I, I don't know how this, this is going to go towards the character, Your Honor, because this has okay, no relevancy on the speaking. issue of the 
um, the abuse and violence. Uh, I think we talked earlier in reference to the issue regarding the property that is not at issue. So right, I'm, I'm just trying to figure to out what the U-Haul and everything else has to do with the abuse. All right. I'm now going to speak. So I'm okay. objecting to relevancy in okay. reference to it. I, know, I haven't heard the question. <laughs> what was the question? I asked her if she used a U-Haul to remove her belongings from the home. I am showing that she has been taking the position with this court since day one, as well as showing photographs to this court since day one, that she never removed her belongings out. She never actually moved out of the home. She always intended to live there. And that goes to her credibility and her character. Your Honor, again, I'm going to object. This doesn't, this, th that has no the objection material in reference to the issue regarding the abuse. Uh, we're here today in reference to see whether or not an occurrence took place on the third. Um, we're here to hear if there's any further acts uh, as it relates to Mr. Sullivan. And again, I object to the relevancy. Well, you also asked questions about the personal property, and you're asking the judge to grant her personal property on a temporary basis. So I think that I can ask questions about it. So well, Lily uh, Bristow, who I've n never seen before this video, I think does a really nice job in the face of all this crazy uh, representing her client all the way through. In fact, a big part of this cross-examination is to bring out that the, that the complainant isn't um, isn't credible, and to be honest with you, I thought she was pretty convincing with it. I'm going to overrule it, but we're going to get through this like quickly because I remember this was all about the house. I don't want to relitigate right. much about about the house, but we're going to get this very narrow and get it to it. Go ahead, Miss Bristow. Understood, Miss Sullivan. You got a U-Haul to remove all of your belongings as well as some marital property from the mar marital residence during this action. Isn't that correct? I did not. I moved things that was mine that I brought into the marriage both times, things I purchased. So, no, I did not move marital things. Everything that was there in the house when he re re returned back was his. And pictures showed that. Okay. You took the entire bedroom set from the home. Is that correct? It was mine. Okay. Do you have receipts to show that you were the only one that paid for those? It, it it doesn't matter. It was mine, and we were stop. married over ten years. Stop! 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 stop. Let me interrupt. When so uh, here it is. When you're across, Miss Bristow asks you a question. The first answer out of your mouth needs to be yes or no. And then you can offer an explanation, and I'll decide what's marital property or if it should have been taken or not or whatever. But it, at this point, exactly. Well, whose property is is a conclusion of law. And, uh, you know, the, the attorney's let, letting that go because what, what are you going to do? I mean, she doesn't understand. I, I will give her that. She, uh, Ms. Sullivan simply doesn't understand. She She's getting argumentative, not answering the question and, and injecting a conclusion of law. The judge tells her this fairly gently. Uh, the, the, while that's sort of bad, um, it, it, we, we, you expect that from litigants. You, you don't expect that from attorneys. Just a yes or a no, and then you can offer yes. a little bit of explanation. Yes. yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I have receipts. Okay. Now, you took the bedroom frame, the mattress, the dresser, the TV stand. Yes, the I have fire. receipts. Let me finish. I have please. receipts. Let yes, me finish. I have receipts. Stop, stop. I, let me finish. Everybody, Okay. One at a time. The court reporter can only take that one person at a time. Miss Sullivan, you let her finish asking the question completely, then answer. Go ahead, Miss Bristow. Start over. Isn't it true that you took the bed, frame, the mattress, the dresser, the TV stand with a built in fireplace? Is that correct? Yes. And you cannot take a bed if you don't take the complete bedroom set. You said the complete bedroom set. So why are you trying to break it down into detail? Ms. Sullivan, Ms. Sullivan, don't argue with her, please. Ma'am, just answer her questions. Yes, I Ms. said yes. Ms. Hood is taking yes. I said yes. Don't argue with me either, Ms. Sullivan. Today is not the day. I am not the one, ma'am. Okay? Every, yes. Not just lawyers, everybody's going to show some nice decorum. Now, Ms. Hood is actively taking notes. She's going to ask follow-up questions, okay? So let her do her job. You answer Ms. Bristow's questions. Now, Ms. Sullivan, these items were purchased during the marriage. Is that correct? 
Yes. Okay. You also took the washer and the which, by the way, is just sort of the definition of marital property. But okay. Dryer. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. That was purchased during the marriage. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You also took the garage freezer. Is that correct? Why are we going through this? Yes. Okay. That was also purchased during the marriage, correct? I was married to him over 10 years. Yes. It was a lot of things purchased during the marriage. Okay. Um, you also took some televisions. Is that correct? If he want a detail of what I took, why you just don't say that? Okay. Stop, Miss Sullivan, one more time. This isn't for you to argue with Miss Bristow. This is for you to answer her questions. Miss Hood will then ask follow-up questions. We're gonna get through this. Stop fighting it, Miss Sullivan. Go ahead, Miss Bristow. Now, are you aware that? taking all of these items out of the home is in violation of the standing order in the divorce action? I had put down things that I would take just in case before the, the divorce order was even in place because I know how he operated. I know what he did before. And I did put down my bed because I brought a bed into the marriage that I purchased on my own. Yes. Was yes, there ever a court um, order providing you permission to remove any of these marital property items from the home during the divorce action? The divorce action was in place afterwards. Okay. My order was in place first. Okay. You took the marital property from the home after you filed for divorce. Is that no, correct? No, he filed for divorce. He filed uh, for Ms. divorce. Sullivan. Ms. Sullivan. Ms. Sullivan. Ms. Sullivan. Ms. Sullivan, I am begging you. Let Miss Bristow finish her question. First word out of your mouth, yes or no. And then please let Miss Hood do her job. I'm going to move on. I think the pleadings speak for themselves. Um, now, it has been your position and you have maintained to this court throughout this entire temporary protective order that you never actually moved out of the marital residence. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But you did, in fact, move all of that furniture, correct? Yes. So that position was in fact false, correct? No, it was not. Please explain. No, no it was not because I can I can take anything I want at my house when I if, if I'm taking it to move it or give it to someone. You don't know my son was the I was not the only adult living there. So the things you're asking me, did I move things out of the house? I did, but that doesn't mean I moved out. I was still there. I okay. was still staying there. Okay. Where were you sleeping? It was several beds. Objection, Your Honor. I don't know the relevancy in reference to where she's staying. Um, I really don't want the information where she was staying anyway, because this man has been harassing her for over the years. So. Uh, they were just testifying as to uh, whether or not she moved out of the house. It's relevant as the day is long. I'm not going to allow my client to divulge any information about where she was staying at that moment, Your Honor. All right. So, Ms. Bristow, um, I'm, 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 I'm again objecting to the relevancy. I don't understand why we keep questioning regarding this. Um, the property, the house is not at issue. Um, Ms. Bristow still wants to ask questions regarding something that doesn't have anything to do with the violence and the domestic abuse arising out of April 3rd. She's been lying to this court since day one, and it goes to character and credibility. She did have not, not, she not lying. Basically, one, she horse, has one rider, Miss Miss King. One horse, one rider, and the rider's been Miss Hood. Now, okay, okay. Can we take let's stand by. Let's stand by. Let's stand by. Let's stand by. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Okay. I remember this whole stuff back in the earlier hearing. Miss Sullivan, you've got to answer the question. Miss Hood is a wonderful lawyer who's going to ask you questions after this, okay? Let her get through it. I get it. There are bond conditions. I've seen the bond order. I've looked it up, and I see there's no court date. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. I don't know why I keep going blurry. Uh, there's no court date pending in front of Judge Morrison. Uh, so I checked that there's not a new order there. But 
we need to get through this. And no, ma'am, Miss Sullivan, you can't just do what you want to do when there's a divorce file, no matter who filed it. Neither one of you can with property. Judge Ellerby will decide and make that decision, the final decision on what is marital property. Not you, not Mr. Sullivan, not Ms. Bristow, not Ms. Hood. No, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's a standing order, so you're not supposed to be doing anything with anything. So we're going to leave that to Judge Ellerby. You're going to answer her questions. We're going to get through this, and we're getting out of here. Go ahead, Ms. Bristow. Do you currently live in the state of Georgia, Ms. Sullivan? You can just answer something in general. You know, I, I, there is the bond condition, so you don't have to. I don't need to know. Place of I just want to know. No, she she you're muted. Georgia, because I do believe that it is relevant to this action, because obviously this temporary protective order is placed in Georgia. Okay. I don't want to address Ms. Sullivan. I, I, you know, so as she just asked if you live. In Georgia. I, I care less what state you live in. Don't answer that. Don't <laughs> answer. Okay, one horse, and I hear a second oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was on mute. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. okay. That is a bold faced lie, in my opinion. She was d directing her client not to answer. The, the judge was saying one at a time. That's typical. There, that is not out of, out of line for Judge Manning to say. He, she keeps saying one horse, one rider, saying you got a witness on the stand. I'm dealing with one attorney from your side during the course of that witness. That's the way most judges would do it. She, she turns on her microphone, tells the witness not to answer a question, not that it was brilliant or anything, but, and then claims right there that she didn't know she was on. It's a complete lie. She was talking to her. It, 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 oh, it, it's it's hard to watch. So it's not giving. I do not want you to give you your address. I prefer not to answer. Yeah, because okay. It, it, so it you just said, happy birthday. I'm still the I'm still the victim here, and it doesn't this matter. Yeah, Sullivan. Sullivan. I've honestly no. I, I, understand. I don't know what is going on with people in general. Ms. Sullivan, leave your camera on. Ms. Sullivan. Ms. Sullivan. She's having problems, dif technical difficulties, Your Honor. This is nothing that she's doing intentional. Ms. Sullivan. Hold on. I'm trying to get there. Just, just turn your camera back on. That button that you hit to turn it off, hit that button to turn it back on. Let's just start your video. Okay. That's it. Okay. Miss Sullivan, you have refused to answer a question. I can take a negative inference, whatever I want to with that. That's fine. You can do that. Ms. Sullivan, turn your camera around so I can see your face. I don't know how you turn it. You got to turn your phone around or whatever you got to do. Now, nobody is making any insinuations. No, you're a victim. You're not a victim. Anything like that. I just want you to answer her questions. Just like Mr. Sullivan is going to answer Ms. Hunt's questions. Go ahead, Ms. Krista. I'll wait for her to fix her camera, Judge. Now take your... I love that. That that's minor, but she she just keeps taking herself off camera. She's testifying. She's the one seeking relief. She's asking the court to do something, and she can't keep her face on camera while she's testifying. Oh. It's unbelievable, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't ask a witness questions if they were if I was in this circumstance and they weren't on the camera. When they, it's, it's certainly easier to lie uh, if if you're not on camera. So I, it's a small point, but I, but I agree with it totally. I think she handled it well. So if off mute and don't touch anything else, Miss Sullivan. No, I just want my objection to be noted. Um, I do not want my client to respond to a question. Um, to uh, impute in reference to her um, safety. Um, this <laughs> is a matter involving a domestic abuse, and it is not in her interest to divulge any information about 
where she resides, whether it's in the state of Georgia, whether it's in Florida or wherever else. This Ooh, is for the protection be a Florida of the client. This is for the protection of the client. It might not be in Florida, Miss Hood, but especially down there around the Fort, Fort Myers. I understand. I'm not making your prevailing address. Go ahead, Miss Bristow. Next question, please. Objection. What's the relevancy on this, Your Honor? They're asking for attorney's fees. What's the relevancy of this, Judge? I I'm trying to figure out how it's relevant to this matter. If you're going to ask for attorney's fees and her family member is representing her, it's relevant. So I'm supposed to Boom. And correct. To represent her for free, even if I was? I, I don't need to answer your questions. This, this is between me and Ms. Hood, and then the judge makes a decision. It's really not hard. She's related to you, I think. She is. I put that on the record. Your niece. Is King not your niece? Am I right, Ms. Sullivan? Okay, right. Go ahead. Next question. Ms. Sullivan. Ms. King is your niece. Is that correct? You got to take yourself off mute. Yes. Okay. Now, are you getting a deal on attorney's fees for her representing you in this case? Miss King is not my attorney. Miss Hood is my attorney. Miss King is the advisor. I understand. Did she lower her hourly rate to represent you? Miss King did, did not lower her rate because she's not my attorney. So, Miss Hood is my attorney. Okay, so Miss King is here today in every other hearing for free. Is that correct? Miss Hood is my attorney. You asked me what she's my attorney. Miss Hood is my attorney. Okay. Miss King has made it very clear that she is also representing you today. So is Miss King billing you for her time in representing you? What? What? <clears throat> Have you paid attorney's fees for Miss King to represent you in this action? It's yes or no. Yes or no? Have you paid attorney's fees for Ms. King to represent you in this action? I'm, so really, I'm, I'm really upset at the fact that this is even going on. Why does this got to do with the, the crime? Ms. Sullivan, answer the question. Ms. Sullivan. I, I, I answered the question. I said no, she wasn't my attorney. Why no. would I give her money? Ms. Sullivan, money? she asked you a specific question about pay. No. no, no. I haven't paid her anything. Gotcha. Next question. Have you paid Ms. Hood any attorney's fees for representing you today? You can't ask me that. Oh, she did and she can. But that's where my video cut off. That's all I've got. I, I'm I'm not I'm sorry. That's all I had, and and then I was uh, I was uh, my defense is I was entertaining you all. I was taking on the magical mystery tour of Judge Maryville's courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> Live streaming while while the rest of that hearing was going on. So I so I don't have it. Uh, Biggin says he's got it. He might send it to me. If he does, I might do a little update on it. I don't know. I don't know if I'll, if I'll see it or not. I heard from everybody that more, more happened at the end of the hearing, uh, but I even thought that that part was interesting. Even that, I, I don't know, I had about a half hour clip there or even less, but the, even that was like a, a couple hours or an hour and a half uh, edited down because there, there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of other uh, stuff going on here too, like just not being prepared, falling off, uh, you know, you know, pretending that your equipment doesn't work when you when you don't like the way the hearing's going. It, it, it's 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 pretty contentious stuff. I thought I thought Attorney Bristol did a really nice job. I thought the judge did a really nice job. Um, Attorney Hood was okay. I think she got out of line slightly, but within normal parameters. Just just sort of getting upset. But uh, th th this Attorney King, I 
whatever. It's not my thing. But but, but just just saying this, I'm shocked that she still ha- has a license to practice law. Just I'm just basing it on the demeanor of this one video that I just saw with you. I I, I just don't know. I, I assume that she acts like that in other places, and I, I would I wouldn't get away with that for thirty seconds. If I if I started huffing and puffing and rolling my eyes and, and interrupting the judge in Cook County, I, I you know I would first be warned, and if I did it again, and she was, and if I did it again, I we'd be looking at uh, sanctions and uh, and maybe even going into custody. I, I'm telling you, that's the, the, I'm certain of that. I've been doing this a long time. I'm certain that it would not be tolerated from me in Cook County. <laughs> that's that's what I, that's what I'm here to tell you. So if Biggin passes that along to me, I'll, I'll I'll do an update, or he might just throw one up on his channel. Thank you all for coming out. I'm surprised anybody came out after I drug you through that <laughs> that that uh, car being towed uh, hour long hearing to nowhere yesterday, <laughs> which. Which I did because it was cocktail hour, and it, even worse than that, I was uh, whatever, whatever. I was enjoying it too much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was wrong. It was wrong. I'm bad, bad Mike, bad naughty Mike. It, it, you know what happens sometimes? It happens. Usually, right after some cocktails. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for coming out. I'll see you soon.